to all of you good evening sir चलिए तो मैं आप लोगों से कुछ जनरल डिस्कशन करता हूं जो आज जो लीगल एस्पेक्ट हैं आप उनके बारे में कितना अवेयर हो पा रहे हैं एक वर्ड आया है रेमिशन इन अ केस ऑफ विल्किस बानो तो सीआरपीसी में ये कहीं प्रोविजन दिया हुआ है बिल्किस बानो जो है में जो रेमिशन मिला है उनके कन्विक्टेड को उसे नोट कर लीजिएगा आप लोग देख लीजिएगा कि अप्रोप्रिएट गवर्नमेंट्स की क्या पावर होती है रेमिशन पर और ये वर्ड जो है कमिटीशन है रेमिशन है पार्डन है सस्पेंशन है और ये कोरिलेट कर लिए आप जो है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के आर्टिकल 72 एंड 161 दर्शनी यदि मेरी आवाज सुन पा रही हूं तो जरा आप अपना यस सर कैमरा ऑन करें गुड गुड इवनिंग इवनिंग सर आपका इंटरव्यू कब है सर नाइनटीन अगस्त आपको नाइनटीन का है चलिए अभी आपने कौन कौन से लॉ सारे पढ़ लिया है आप लोगों ने सारे लॉ में कहा तक कवर हो गया है सर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कर रही हूँ कॉन्स्टिट कर रही हैं आप और आपका मोस्ट फेवरेबल सब्जेक्ट कौन है यदि आपके पास अपॉर्चुनिटी आती है ऐसा इंटरव्यू बोर्ड आपसे पूछता है सर आई वुड लाइक टू मेंशन माय इंटरेस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू मेंशन इफ माय इंटरेस्ट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड आई पी सी आई पी सी गुड आई पी सी में कोई स्पेसिफिक एरिया Sir, not such. I have read. Whole. Yes, sir. As a whole. Okay. Jose, you tell me. IPC me. Yes, sir. Furiosus, furious sweep punitor. A concept is. एक लीगल मैगजीम है जिस पर आपका एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन बेस्ड करता है इंडियन पैनल कोड सर इट इज अनसाउंड माइंड क्या कहता है Sir, Section 84 stated nothing is an offence which is done by a person who is unsound mind, and uh, when he uh, does a crime at that time, uh, he does not aware about that crime that what he is doing is contrary to the law or wrong. Wrong. Due to the yes, sir. Matt Norton principle kya tha? Sir, it is a basically a guidelines issued by the. Uh, I don't know British court or yeah, something. The it is a guideline related to the unsound. Yes, sir. It related to the unsoundness uh, of mind. That uh, what is the medical uh, insanity or what is legal insanity? They should basic uh, basically a guideline. Sir, remember, I don't know. Remember, sir, what? What is the difference between legal insanity and legal, medical insanity? So medical in insanity uh, insanity refers that when a person uh, uh, when uh, when anyone is unsound or true uh, uh, or when anyone is unsound that a medical report showed uh, that uh, he he is uh, he is facing such kind of uh, insanity but legal insanity sir uh, legal insanity uh, sir. Right now, I cannot. I cannot recall because I haven't uh, revisioned the IPC. Now you are going to 
इफ यूर मोर इंटरेस्टेड सब्जेक्ट टू द बोर्ड ठीक है तो इसे अच्छे से रिवाइज करके जाना है बेटा ठीक है जब आप किसी के बारे में आप ये कह दिए ये इंटरेस्टेड सब्जेक्ट है मेरा फेवरेबल सब्जेक्ट है फिर आप डिफेंड नहीं ले सकते no, sir, I, अभी okay. रिवीजन नहीं किया ना इसलिए यू हैव अ टाइम आपके पास टाइम मेलाइन से एंड मेलाइन प्रोफिटम सर आई हैव नॉट रेड आईपीसी में क्या पढ़ा है फिर अभी आपने सर दीस टर्म्स आई एम नॉट अवेयर मेला इन से एंड मेला इन प्रोफिटम लड़की थी जो की प्रिंस के साथ चली गई थी अपनी मर्जी से बट सर जो मतलब इसमें ये आया था की वो लड़की जो थी एक एडल्ट लग रही थी बट उसने अपने आप को कंसील करके एक आ, मतलब कंसील करके एक छोटी मतलब सोलह साल की लड़की थी बेटा इसी में ये दोनों प्रिंसिपल इवॉल्व हुआ था मेला इन से मेला इन प्रोविजन ठीक है ओके सर सर इसी केस में है चलिए सर कोई हिंदी भी केस है इससे रिलेटेड आई थिंक मुझे मुझे जो है आप ये बताए आपके यहाँ किडनेपिंग से रिलेटेड बहुत सारी केसेस है बेटा प्रिंसिपल है वेदर दिस प्रिंसिपल विच वॉज इवॉल्व बाई द कॉमन लॉ कैन बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन स्टेच्यूटरी लॉ This was the question कि ये कॉमन लॉ के प्रिंसिपल को स्टेट्यूटरी लॉ में लाया जा सकता है या नहीं लाया जा सकता है तो yes, उस पर ये हाँ लाया जा सकता है ये बेटा किस केस में बताया गया था कि मेन्सिया को हर स्टेट्यूट में इंप्लाइड माना जाएगा अनलेस आर एंटिल इज इज एक्सप्रेसली जब तक उसे एक्सप्रेसली ना मना कर दिया गया हो तब तक उसे माना जाएगा चलिए ये जो पॉइंट्स मैं आपको दे रहा हूँ इन पॉइंट्स को आपको नोट करना है ठीक है जॉट डाउन करिए आप सर सिराज वर्सेस डी रटजन का केस आपने पढ़ा होगा सिराज वर्सेस डी रटजन का केस जो था उसमें ये बताया गया है इन एवरी स्टेच्यूट द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मेन्सिया इज इंक्लूडेड अल्ले सारे इट इज एक्सप्रेसली पार्ट जब तक कि उसे एक्सप्रेसली बार ना किया गया हो तब तक हर स्टेट्यूट में उसे माना जाएगा कि वो आपका बार्ड है सर आ गए हैं तो, तो आप जो है सर मुझे सिर्फ पांच मिनट दीजिएगा सर आई एम जस्ट प्रिपेयरिंग चरण स्पर्शन चरण स्पर्शन अगेन प्रियदर्शनी अभी हैं आप सर प्रज्ञा कैमरा ऑन करो बेटा प्रज्ञा यदि मेरी बात आवाज सुन पा रही हो तो कैमरा ऑन कर लो जरा इफ यू आर अ कंफर्टेबल चलो प्रियदर्शनी आप कैमरा ऑन करिए तो आईपीसी में बहुत सारी चीजें बताना चाह रहा हूँ बेटा आप जो है इसे अपना इंटरेस्टेड सब्जेक्ट बताने जा रही हैं तो आप इन पॉइंट्स को जरूर देख के जाइएगा ठीक है ओके एलिमेंट्स ऑफ क्राइम आप देख लीजिएगा स्टेजेस ऑफ द क्राइम आप देखिएगा प्रिपरेशन और प्रिपरेशन और अटेम्प्ट में डिफरेंस क्या है वो आप देखिएगा अटेम्प्ट को डिफाइन करिए अटेम्प्ट अटेम्प्ट क्या होता है प्रज्ञा मेरी आवाज आ रही है आपके पास तक यस yes, सर चलिए अटेम्प्ट डिफाइन करिए सर अटेम्प्ट इज व्हेन वी एक्ट इन द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द एक्ट वी हैव इन द माइंड 
सर सादर प्रणाम आप आप चलो यस सर 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 आप चलो तो अटेम्प्ट को डिफाइन करने के लिए कोई डेफिनेशन है या किसी क्रिमिनोलॉजिस्ट की कोई डेफिनेशन है सर राइट नाउ आई कॉन्ट रिकॉल बट इट इज वेन यू एक्ट वन वेन वन एक्ट इन दर्देंस ऑफ the uh, towards the commission of that act which he has in the mind and what is the theory relating to the attempt aapke yahan koi theories hain jis par ye based hai aapka ya koi english theories hain jis par attempt based tha yes sir there are but i can't recall right now object theory padha hai aapne furtherance theory proximity theory yes sir acha अभियानंद मिश्रा का केस पढ़ा है आपने लैंडमार्क जजमेंट है आपके यहाँ यस सर आई हर्ड अबाउट इट चलिए मुझे सिर्फ दो डिफरेंस बताइए कल्पेबल होमिसाइड और मर्डर में सर फर्स्टली इट इज द डिफरेंस मेनली बिटवीन कल्पेबल होमिसाइड अमाउंटिंग टू मर्डर एंड कल्पेबल होमिसाइड नॉट अमाउंटिंग टू मर्डर as per the supreme court in case of uh, state of andhra pradesh versus r punaiya the difference between culpable homicide amounting to murder and not amounting to murder is the degree of probability of causing the death in any act and sir secondly uh, for culpable homicide the level of intention or knowledge as required is lower than it is required in the case of murder because in But case that's... of cul culpable homicide the death is the likely cause however in the case of the murder death is the most probable cause of uh, the act done okay reg versus govinda ka case padha hai aapne Sir, yes, sir. It is the landmark case uh, in which uh, the court has uh, differentiated between the culpable homicide and murder. And who has differentiated? The name sir, of the I, judge. Sir, I can't recall. Okay. All murder is a culpable homicide, but all culpable homicide is not a murder. Whether yes, it sir. is it true? Yes, sir. It is true. So, you have not said that. One reason is that the answer is the same. पहला yes, अंतर तो आपको ये बोल देना चाहिए फिर अगेन द डिग्री ऑफ द इंटेंशन को आप कैरी करें या और चीजों को लेके जाएं आप ठीक है yes, yes, आपसे कौन सा सब्जेक्ट पूछा जाए आप तो जिसमें कंफर्टेबल हो तो अभी सर यू कैन आस्क आई विल ट्राई टू गिव आंसर्स in every subject relating to your syllabus yes sir i will try to my level best to answer your questions right aapko yahi kapda pen ke through dena hai no sir aaj mera sir mera interview nahi tha mera 23rd ko hai isliye chal okay just let me know about the interpleader suit sir interpleader sir it is provided under order 35 uh which uh, uh, and section 88 according to which when two person uh claim uh, adversely to any yeah, third mind, person my mind jo hai ise thoda sa fix karo aur apna posture maintain karo thoda sa theek hai yes sir chalo mic ko aap power mein aisa lagao to kaam nahi ho raha hai sir ye mic ko apne power mein lagao माइक को शर्ट की पावर में फिक्स कर दे मुंह पे लगा लो चलो ऐसे लगा के रख लो हाथ नीचे कर लो मैं भाई ये बताना चाह रहा हूँ
ऐसे हाँ चलो ठीक है कंटिन्यू करो सर इंटरप्लीडर सूट इज फाइल्ड बाय अ पर्सन व्हेन टू पर्सन क्लेम्स अगेंस्ट एनी एनी फॉर एनीथिंग अगेंस्ट हिम इन विच ही हैज नो इंटरेस्ट एनीथिंग मींस सर लाइक एनी मूवल प्रॉपर्टी और एनीथिंग विच ही हैज इन हिज पोजीशन बट एनीथिंग इन हिज पोजीशन सर एनी प्रॉपर्टी और मनी whatever it may be there are three words money debt and property whether it is movable or immovable only okay, these sir. three things were mentioned chaliye okay sir sir in which that person has no uh, interest he just uh, claims the uh, money or charges he have in the uh, taking care of that uh, property or debt then he can file a suit interpleader suit under order 88 of the cpc order 30 35 section the section 88 apne section bola order bol diya sir sorry sir chaliye interpleader suit cross suit kya hote hai sir it is सर मे आई एक्सप्लेन इट विद एन एग्जाम्पल सर वेन अ पर्सन हैज अ सर्टेन अमाउंट ऑफ क्लेम एंड अ सिमिलर अमाउंट ऑफ क्लेम is in the favor of another person also means both have claims in their favor against each other uh, they can file a cross suit isse counter claim bola ja sakta hai kya sir according to what i can recall a counter claim is always pleaded as a, uh, defense so phir set off kya hota hai sorry sir okay paper suit aapne padha hoga yes sir yes sir and what are the grounds to reject the pauper suit sir uh, when uh, it is provided under order 33 of cpc when the uh, person filing the application uh, has no means uh, there is no cause of action in the suit or when the person filing for the suit has uh, fraudulently dispose of a property um, within i think 6 months of before filing uh, is 2 uh, months here yeah. so there is a two certain months. time 2 months, months, months before filing the suit uh, um, before filing and, uh, the application or suit before filing the application for uh, suing as uh, indigent and also when he has colluded with uh, uh, or any person has uh, said to finance the suit Sir, and there are certain other grounds also. I can't recall. Okay. And who is an indigent person? Sir, indigent person is any person who has not a property of one thousand rupees. Ah, uh, apart from the subject matter of the suit, ah, uh, is indigent person. And what? What is the next ground? One more ground. सॉरी सर चलो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में कहीं पे डॉक्टर ऑफ सेवरेबिलिटी का कॉन्सेप्ट है हैव यू हर्ड द टर्म डॉक्टर ऑफ सेवरेबिलिटी और सेवरेबिलिटी जो सर आपने सर आपसे कई बार कह चुके हैं कि जब भी आपको क्वेश्चन ना आए आप ऊपर ना आख ले जाइए चेहरा ऊपर ना लेके जाएं आप ठीक है ना 
आपको एक्सप्रेशन अपना चेंज नहीं करना है सर शुरू करें सर चलो हाँ चलो आज किसका है ऐश्वर्य का है ना ऐश्वर्य का सर ऐश्वर्य आ जाओ बेटा यस सर आई एम कमिंग यस गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन सर सर यस Ashur, tell tell us about your um, educational journey. Uh, how you chose it, and what decided your choices to get into law as a subject? Indeed, sir. So uh, I have pursued my senior secondary examinations in physics, chemistry, and mathematics. From Jawahar Nawodhi Vidyalay. After completing my twelfth, I was inclined towards a service who was living in the society, and uh, I got motivated from uh, legal field, and I opted to pursue my BBA LLB in legal sector. I have chosen Uttarakhand Technical University, or else I can say I have pursued my BBA LLB from Uttarakhand Technical University, which is in Dehradun, and. Uh, since after completion of my course i am preparing for judicial services so this okay. has been the year, which year did you graduate from uh, that university so i have graduated in year 2020 all right and uh, uh, this is to 2023 so since your graduation we can say that you have been preparing for the, uh, for these exams mm -hmm. or anything else did you also uh, continue to do something else or pick up something else no sir uh, i am very predator mind that i have to make my career in judicial services itself and that's why i was preparing for it all right uh, what what is your area of interest other than the academic studies and all any hobby any area of interest i am uh, very much fond of music especially ghazals and sufi music ghazals so uh, tell me You you understand nukta? What is a nukta? Uh, so nukta is a part of ghazal which is used while she sing it, and uh, I I I I cannot express what nukta is basically, but it is an essential part of ghazals. But I not I'm, recall. I'm not I'm not asking about makta, nukta. Uh, sorry sir, I I don't know about it. nukta is the point that we place to alter the expression or pronunciation for example we cannot say gazal we say ghazal ghazal yes sir that, point, that bindu that is nukta isn't it okay sir. so what what is a ghazal tell us so uh, ghazal basically means uh, it's a composition of a particular sayers which is used in urdu or we convert it musically and then we give it a tune and then we sing according to our mood and how would be uh, what would be the difference between a ghazal and a nazm so a nazm includes uh, two lines or four lines basically but a ghazal includes a composition of nazms ghazal is composed of nazms made up of nazms which has similar moods it can be written by two or more writers but if the mood of the uh, uh, moods of the nazm will be same that will be included in a ghazal and can be sung by a singer All right. Who's your favorite singer? Ghazal singing. So uh, I'm a very big fond. I'm a fond of Jagjit Singh and uh, Mehdi Hasan and Gulam Ali. Three people I admire. Very right. Very right. Name one uh, Ghazal of Mehdi Hasan Saab that you like most. Yes, sir. Uh, I like uh, Chupke Chupke Raat Din of uh, Mehdi Hasan very much. And uh, one more Ghazal which I am fond of his is. Uh, जहा कहीं था हिना को खेलना हिना वहीं पे महक रही है हमारी सांसों में आजकल वो हिना की खुशबू महक रही है आई यू श्योर चुपके चुपके इज संग बाय मेहंदी हसन साहब और इज इट बाय गुलाम अली साहब पार्डन सर इट वाज बाय गुलाम अली साहब इट वाज संग बाय गुलाम अली एंड मेहंदी हसन सिंग दिस हिना सॉन्ग राइट ऑल इट वेरी वेल वेरी वेल डू यू सी एनी स्कोप ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर हॉबी हेल्पिंग यू इन योर करियर एज इट प्रोग्रेसेस इन जुडिशियरी so uh 
I will not say gazelles, but music. I will take music as a whole thing, and music can set your mood. Whatever you are feeling, you are feeling very happy. You are feeling very sad. The music has a very emphasis on controlling your emotions and uh, giving you a pleasancy. So, in my uh, in my opinion, judiciary is uh, is a profession where you have to be very emotionally very stable, very strong, and very unbiased. so music can help you as a therapy in keeping yourself calm and keeping yourself composed throughout your journey as a judicial officer all right in coming back to your academics uh, rate the three domains in law 1 2 3 as per your preference not water tight just loosely rate it uh, uh, on number 3 i will place law of torts on number 2 i will place family laws and uh, on my topmost preference i will give it of i will give it for uh, constitutional law all right all right uh, have you heard about the doctrine of occupied field uh yes sir doctrine of occupied field uh, has resemblance with doctrine of uh, vacated field which was recently Recently, in news, when the Supreme Court has ordered the uh, 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 for a appointment committee of Chief Election Commissioner, so this doctrine was used. The doctrine says, whenever there is uh, lackings in the law, or whenever there is lackings in the legislation and executive action, uh, executive actions, the Supreme Court can uh, order under Article One Forty Two to fill this vacancy, and this is known as a uh, doctrine of occupied vacancy. do you not see a relationship of this doctrine uh, uh, with regards to center and state relationship does it have to do anything with the powers of the sun union list and this and that the staggering uh, overlap between the powers of the union and powers of the state to legislate on a particular field is it related to that field uh, indeed sir it is related whenever uh, if any subject has not been mentioned either in union list state list or concurrent list this doctrine gives the power to the parliament or the central government union government to pass any law or to make any law on any matter which has not been given under any of the lists so i think here it can be related do you think separation of power in its true sense exists in uh, present uh, structure of indian constitution and and the entire setup with with respect to indian constitution sir doctrine of separation of powers has not been adopted without applying our own mind or without applying our own conditions it has been there in indian constitution but there is no true separation of power because we have the same person sitting in legislature and that same person to get act as executive although we can say that judiciary is separated from executive and legislative but separation of power does not work in its full frame or in its full structure in our indian constitution and do you think that is a merit or demerit of indian constitution uh so that is the merit of our indian constitution because any law or any situation or any doctrine cannot be 100% foolproof doctrine it has to be used as per the circumstances as per the conditions and as per the similarities or familiarities which has been or in accordance with the society in which we are living or on which we are applying this law so for indian situations in indian soil basically we can say this has been used up to its best and uh, there cannot be any better example of having it a pure separation of power and working it efficiently so in indian constitution it has been adopted and it has been worked so far uh, in favor of india okay uh, there has been multiple instances in, in which uh, many Hi. members of this panel have asked uh, the candidates about one very special thing that has come up and that is uh, the balance between the rights of an accused when it comes to Uh, collection of blood samples dna samples and all swabs etc rights of an accused uh, as a human being as as a private person versus the rights of the state so there has been a lot of discussion and debate on this topic do you see that this process of collecting evidences from a person's uh, person i'm using it very carefully from a person's person using some evidence uh, collecting some evidence does that infringe 
the, the fundamental right that is provided uh, for uh, protection from self-incrimination. Do you see a conflict or not? So uh, I do see a conflict, but in a society where the crime uh, crime has a certain thing to do in our certain disturbing thing to do in our society, so it's very much important to have a particular procedure through which we can control it. And so far as we are not compelling the accused person, we are not compelling him to give evidences against himself, which has been provided under Article 20, sub clause 3. We are not harming his constitutional right. There has to have a procedure. We are compelling. We are compelling. The accused is not ready or willing to give the samples. We are, we are compelling him. So Indeed, compulsion sir. is there. Now you tell me on this premise, this is the major premise that he is being com compelled to lead to give evidence, not lead evidence, to give evidence such as DNA sample. Now does so, it have, does it conflict with that uh, article 23? Sir, it, it do has the com conflict with article 20 sub clause 3. Uh, but how does it? What, sir, is the content of, what is the content of article 20 uh, and 3? Article 20 sub clause 3 states that no person shall be uh, com uh, no compelled to give evidences against himself right. in a criminal case. Yes. Right. But we are taking his samples without his consent, whether he's willing to do give it or not. At that it. point of time, at that particular point of time when the evidences are being collected, is that evidence against him? No, sir. Uh, it can be against him. It may that's be against him. It may not be against him. So we are. Not one. Okay. One. So there may not be a direct conflict. If you go for literal interpretation, there may not be a direct conflict because okay. at that point when the evidences are being collected, they are not evidences against him. Okay, they are neutral okay. material which may be admitted later on as evidence against him. Number one, number two, that protection of Article Twenty Three, if I understand correctly, sirs, sirs will correct me in, in in later conversation, and that is uh, that is basically for testimonial evidence. Okay, so, that protection is essentially for testimonial evidence that you cannot compel somebody to uh, testify against oneself. So that is uh, the kind of context in which that is set up. Okay, okay, no problem. That's fine. That is still under debate. That is open. So constitution, a right to education, you must have heard, right yes. to education has now become uh, a part of the specific fundamental rights. What is your take on right to privacy? So uh, right to pr privacy has been already enshrined under article 21 of Indian constitution. In case of case, Putta Swami versus Union of India, Honorable Supreme Court, uh, nine judges bench in this case, held that right to privacy is the integral part of Article 21. And so far as it is concerned, without uh, the procedure established by law, one cannot infringe the privacy of a person. All right. There has been a lot of debate on one particular issue relating to the right uh, of uh, personal liberty and all, right to life as such. And vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the judicial uh, decisions in recent past, and that is about same-sex marriages. There has been a lot of human cry that the fabric of Indian society that will get distorted uh, from different corners that is coming. And on the other hand, the judiciary has taken a different stand that no, there's no problem as such. So where do you find your opinion in between or at, at either of the extremes? Where, where is your opinion in this? So I, I completely agree with the decision of Supreme Court because uh, every individual has its own interest. Every in individual has its own right to choose a partner, whether he want to do a uh, same-sex marriage or he is going for uh, as in accordance with society. So societal. Do not society, think that it, since it has already been decriminalized, decriminalization has already happened, and thereafter, why there is so much of demand to legalize it? Also, you understand the difference between the two. I think yes, you, you do very well. So why uh, once it has been decriminalized, then why there is also a consistent and persistent demand to legalize it also at, at the same time? Tell me. Uh, we live in a fabric of law in which uh, the marriage had its own place in our society. So for every marital right, for every right for the children, we need to have them accepted as husband and wife. That's why mere decriminalization is with regard to the sexual intercourses that is happening between the same sex. But the so far marriage is concerned, it has uh, con mere con very consequences regarding to very aspects, different aspects like legalization of the child, parentage of the child, 
the uh, how, legal how would there be a child how would there be a child in same sex marriage so there can be the they can adopt the procedure of adoption yes, as well it starts with adopt adoption and problems adoption yeah. as well. yes sir and adoption gives them the parentage right so the, the marriage will give them different rights the first right the marriage will provide them is right to have a dignified life with their partner they can openly say that the 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 person whom i married is from my same sex and he is my husband or he is my wife whatever term they may use for it so that's why i think there is a demand from the people of lgbtq to legalize the same sex marriage as well apart from decriminalizing the sexual intercourse between them okay okay is there a fundamental right uh, or are there some fundamental rights which are available only to the citizens of india and not to the foreigners indeed sir they are the fundamental rights can be categorized as uh, in two parts one right which has been exclusively given to the citizens only and one fundamental the other fundamental rights has been provided to uh, to the persons for example uh, article 14 has been provided exclusively for the uh, persons whether it can be an indian national indian citizen or a person who is not resident of india not citizen of india but few articles for example article 22 article 19 they have been provided specifically for the citizens only and no other person can claim these rights imagine and visualize a court room Uh, this question was asked yesterday also i would like to have your opinion as well on this imagine a court room where you are presiding over the proceedings as as the person who will make the decision and uh, uh, the advocate or counsel of an accused that comes up before the court and asks to withdraw and uh, he does not disclose much about it but you know somehow that the person is actually withdrawing because the accused has actually confessed his crime before that particular person and uh, because of the privilege he is not coming up but he is withdrawing citing some other reason how would you judge such a counsel is a good counsel or is he not or she uh, sir uh, if i am a judicial or my magistrate there i am a judicial person there uh, the withdrawal of the cases are not a legal rule or are not claimed as a right as it has it is a discretionary power of court whether the court can allow it or court can not allow it so far i am concerned i will apply my judicial mind if i know that uh, there are thing of the i am not asking of the procedural aspect or the the legal aspect of it how morally you will hold that particular counsel whether you will hold him uh, uh, morally and professionally right correct or not so if you come to know the reason of withdrawal the real reason of withdrawal is this that is the accused has confessed that is why that particular person is not interested because he thinks he is also a moral person and ethically it is not good for him to to uh, pursue the case of a, a person who has actually committed the crime what is your view on this suppose you were that advocate so the person who is uh, asking for the withdrawal of cases or withdrawal of prosecution by whatever reason i will not consider that person as morally morally right because in a crime it is not the accused against whom the crime has been committed but the crime is committed against the whole society so that person has the opportunity or that pleader has the opportunity to to do some better activities or to uh, to present an example for the society as well but that person is departed out of his personal bias or out of his personal uh, issues so i will not consider it morally or as well as from the societal backdrop i will not consider this good or ethical have you heard about the term alternate plea so alternate plea uh, pardon sir i am not able to recall it right have you heard about the term actionable claim uh, yes sir actionable claims are actionable claims are those claims which are applied on the proper, the, the money which is an unsecured debt unsecured debt and uh, Is, not, there, is there also a claim which is not actionable do you have an example a claim that is not actionable the claim for which the security has already been taken or already been given that claim is not actionable claim a right to sue have you heard about this term yes sir the right to sue is the right of a person to sue or in a particular matter to another person if the person has some 
uh, you can say a right or the bundle of rights or a cause for initiating a action it is said that person has the right to sue in it i have the right to sue a particular uh, party but i enter into a settlement with that party take some money and relinquish my right to sue will it be considered a transfer of property no sir the transfer of property must be for a lawful object and if it is not for uh, for a lawful object it is not a transfer of property is it a property that is the fundamental question right yes, to sir. is it a property right to sue is a property but it is not transferable by virtue of section 6 of transfer of property act obviously you must be thinking that the right to prop the right to sue is a property of movable kind you treat it as a movable property a tangible movable property or an intangible movable property intangible movable property okay okay just one more thing what is your uh, view and understanding on admissibility of whatsapp chats in judicial so, proceedings so law has to develop with the time and uh, in modern era the whatsapp chats play a major role of in communication so whatsapp chats can be admissible as electronic evidences as per the provision of 65a and with uh, in accordance with rules of 65b uh, but it has to be genuine and it has to be certified then 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 it will be admissible as chat certified by who uh, certified by the authority who has been appointed the for example whatsapp information commissioner or whatsapp controlling authority can certify this uh, what 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 about the certification of digital evidence is there a process for it yes sir there is provided in 65b itself yes sir 65b yes sir what does it say so 65b says that the uh, the electronic documents must have been uh, certified by the certifying authority itself okay I, i'll just uh, now hand over to anup sir i'll come back to you later yeah पार्डन सर माई टैप वॉज ओपन एंड दैट्स वाई आई हैव टू गो एंड क्लोज अपार्ट फ्रॉम थ्री थ्री सब्जेक्ट वट एवर यू हैव मैं टू सॉल्व सर any other subject in which you are more comfortable uh, sir i am comfortable in muslim law as well and uh, other subjects oh, you too have already, you have already mentioned in a family law except these three okay so uh, so uh, i love to read evidence act and uh, ipc itself okay sic utre tuo at elenam non ledos This is a Latin maxim. Stick utere tuo at elinum non ledas. Have you heard this Latin maxim? And which section of the Indian Penal Code is based uh, on? Yeah. So uh, I am aware of this maxim, but uh, presently I am not able to recall it as of moment. Right. Okay. And what is the difference between legal insanity and medical insanity? so uh, medical insanity is uh, medical insanity is defined in medical terms a person who is on prescription a person by a, a registered psychologist or a mentalist can certify a person that he is uh, suffering from mental disorder but it does not tell about the gravity of the mental disorder so in the law we take into the consideration the legal insanity legal insanity there are certain principles and test upon which legal insanity is measured for example the wild beast test and uh, the magnotens rule which says that a person who is at the time of committing a crime is not able to understand whether the crime he is committing is a right or wrong that person will be considered as legally insane person and what was the bowler's test so bowler test was uh, related to uh, insanity but it was repealed or it was just uh, it preceded to the magnotens rule 
and what was the magnoton principle magnoton principle states that magnoton rule uh, states that uh, the person who has committed the crime is not able to distinguish between right and wrong whether his act is right or whether his act is wrong is there any difference between lunatic and idiot uh pardon sir i, I am Okay. Am I audible? Meri awaz ja rahi hai aapke paas? Yes, yes, you are audible. Sir. Okay. Malign say and malign provident. What does it yes, mean? So, uh, this was held uh, uh, the both the terms malign say and malign provision were uh, originated in case of R versus Prince, which was related with the. Uh, Malice in law concept basically. So malign say means the acts which are malified in itself, the acts which are wrong by their commission or by their nature. And malice in provision means they has been considered malice in the provision of law. So the in that case, with reference to death case, I can illustrate this. The person uh, was ran away or fled away with a girl of sixteen years. so the court considered that this act of running away with a minor girl is itself a malice and it need not need a recognition of a law or any legislation to punish the person so the person has committed the act which is malice itself here there was a defense which was taken on the side of the prince mistake of the fact what was the mistake so mistake of fact was the age of that girl that was the that girl did not reveal to the prince that she was a person of uh, 16 years or minor And means age is a fact yeah the fact in the present case is that the, whether the no. girl has completed 18 I'm years just, I'm just let 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 me complete yes sir here age is a fact uh, yes not? sir age it is a fact yes sir it is a fact yes sir is there any difference between the mistake of the fact or misconception of the fact uh sir mistake of fact and misconception of fact um what terms are used in indian penal code uh sir mistake of fact means when the party is unable to understand the fact itself and the misconception basically can be termed as when the party understand uh, knows it but he understands it or he processed it in another way or he did not process you know like can can you can you give me an example uh yes sir uh, from a very um, in ordinary sense it can be said the a person uh, who is not knowing the nature of that particular particular thing is said to be that person has done a mistake of fact if the person is unaware of any fact then he is in mistake of fact but if he knows the fact that the, the person, person is unaware, if the person is unaware of the fact then what is the ignorance of the fact uh pardon sir this is ignorance of fact the person is unaware of the fact but uh, a person has mistakenly taken another fact in place of one fact that is mistake of fact then what is the misconception of the fact misconception can be termed as uh, the person understands it in a different way any illustration mm, as of now i am not able to give an illustration on this point sir so i will take part in okay. okay what is muta marriage so uh, muta marriage is prevalent in sia sia community sia sect of muslims it is a marriage on temporary basis for a certain time period why you funded the muta marriage can claim for the maintenance yes sir the wife and the muta marriage can claim for maintenance under the crpc section 125 crpc 125 yes sir is there any provision written Uh, no sir it uh, crpc 125 provides for maintenance to wife and even in mutta marriage the wife will be considered as wife 
the type of marriage does not matter in it is a secular provision okay L- live in relation is legalized in india in which act it gains the sanctity so live in relationship uh, has attained its sanctity from domestic violence act so far I, as i can recall yes, sir and what is musa property musa so, musa property means the undivided interest in the property the property which is undivided and any interest acquired in that property that will be the musa property right of preemption the right of preemption is the right of neighborhood it can be called as right of neighborhood for suppose a person is selling his land he has to offer that land to his neighbor first and in case uh, he is not offering it the neighbor has the right to claim the preemption and it has been widely recognized in indian customary law as well as in muslim law by name of sufa how many kinds of preemption so there are three kinds of preemption okay tell me uh, so i am not able to recalling the name uh, right now at the moment so but i can recall only one name that is to uh, sufaya tafwiz in that i can recall a uh, sufaya safi second one and third one i am not able to have you heard the name of the champerty under the contract act champerty champerty uh, pardon sir i am not aware of this one okay thank you sir okay yes yes sir how are you i'm good sir. thank you for asking as soon as i have seen your biodata you have done the blb from the dehradun yes sir why you gone to dehradun to do your graduation uh so because uh, one of my family men was residing here in dehradun and that's why uh, i w- i would get a familiar environment too in dehradun and so i pursued my bblb from dehradun why you gone for bblb why not blb or bsc llb uh sir uh, when i was opting for my ca- career option in bblb and bblb uh, Uh, i was asked to choose one and uh, since i have st- uh, i i was very interested in corporate litigation in in earliest point of my career so i opted for bblb corporate litigation this bblb is helping some in the corporate uh, litigation uh, yes sir because they teach some uh, basic subjects like accounting economics and uh, uh business uh, environment so it will help a person who will join a corporate sector to understand his basic terms or layman terms of business there is a lot of debate on the uniform civil code yes sir on which basic premises this uniform civil code is resting on which Fun. basic if i if i want to explain in the one simplest form you on we on on what uh, this uniform civil code is based on which concept so uniform civil code has been based on article 44 of indian constitution it which is a directive principle of state policy and it states that uniform civil law should be imposed for everyone irrespective of their religion irrespective of the community they are which in which they are living up to you can define your answer again so uh, uniform civil codes basically stands for a uniform civil law which will be applicable on every person whether belonging from any religion or belonging from any sect of the community i am helping you religion personal law civilized society now you rephrase your answer again because you you are missing something when you are answering religion so so personal law civilized society 
yes sir uniform civil law is a concept which provides for a uniformity in the personal laws of every religion to have a standard society or have a civilized society if i will say there is a no necessary connection between religion and personal law in a civilized society now you want to change your answer uh no so uh what uh, i agree with you but i agree with the statement you have stated but sir uh, in my opinion i guess there is a deep dark connection in between the religion and the personal laws of the person in regard to india as a country if i will accept your this assertion then article 44 will fail uh but no, sir uh, article 44 is saying that the basic premises on which article 44 is resting that is no connection between religion and the personal law in the civilized society on this premises whole concept has been carried forward and now you are saying that there no sir there is a connection with the religion as the personal law uh, yes, sir myself and you are saying the two different thing yes or no yes sir these are two different things i agree sir but so far the religions has been governed by their personal laws that's what i was saying and this code will governing them irrespective of their religion that's why i was saying so i was saying the same statement but i was i said in different words or in a very lethargic manner i would say i would agree to it so now come on the two issue one this uniform civil code is for the muslim second uniform civil code will impact the hindus also can you can you explain this uh, yes sir uniform civil case, uh, code will not uh, affect muslims only but it is applicable on hindus also uniform civil code as like the criminal code of india the criminal laws of india it will be applicable on the person irrespective of their religion irrespective of their personal laws why why muslims are opposing it uh, because sir, they consider their uh, the book they worship as their fundamental uh, fundamental principle on which their life should be based and they should uh, they are demanding to be still be governed by the book they follow that's why they are opposing it and uh, uniform civil code will certainly make some changes in the personal laws of muslims that's why they are opposing it the major portion which the new forms will code is going to attack is the property issue inheritance and the marriage why muslim ladies are not supporting this because it is it's useful to them it will helpful to them so uh, again this uh, uh, question of faith is coming in between and uh, the people are still wanted to be governed by the same uh, the same personal law through which they have been governed for years and uh, in marriage also the there are certain uh, changes that are being brought by this act for example uh, the divorce proceeding will be different from what they have followed and in adoption there will be a uniform procedure and uh, adoption will be applicable in muslim community so far adoption was not practiced in the muslim community and as regard to inheritance i think uh, muslim why, communities are opposing because, yes. why certain section of hindus are opposing this uniform civil code so certain sections of hindu who are tribals and uh, who have been following their own tribal laws and who have their own customs or the validity of custom supporting their practices so they are opposing this because uh, they consider that the uniform civil code might hamper their fundamental practices what they are practicing as being a tribal or being a hindu what is several offenses constituting one offense what is this so uh, several offenses constituting uh, constituting one offense uh, several of Uh, pardon sir I, i may take few seconds to think on it sure, 
so uh, can it be the omission of uh, omission to giving food to a person and then beating that person so both these offenses uh, are combined and give effect to a, uh, a an offense which is murder single transaction rise to several offenses what is this so transactions which lead to certain offense means suppose a person is hitting a person by uh, a bat or a uh, or a stick and that person that person for a now is admitted in the hospital for the moment that person will be held guilty for grievous hurt but the transaction may lead to his death after four or five days and if the connection is that the person has been died from the wounds that has that was given to that person that will be said the transaction leading to his death if a person has committed a several offenses then how he will be punished so uh, he will be tried for all those offenses in different different trials as per the crpc and he will get different punishment for that offenses if each and every offense he will get different punishments are, are you sure uh, yes sir if in a, if in a judgment person is being uh, ear marked for the several offenses then you want to say for every offenses the person will be uh, found guilty and punished if those all the several offenses are combining and giving it one effect then that person will be punished for that one effect only for example a person is beating another person with a stick and he gives 50 strikes of a stick but still it will be counted as a strike of a stick and he will be punished for giving hurt but if a person is committing different offenses he will be held separately liable for each and every offense he has committed what is consolidated fund of india so consolidated fund of india has been provided under article 266 of indian constitution and uh, it is state uh, it is the fund of india in which all the money all the loans raised or the money charged and uh, all the debt which are received by the indian government all the taxes which are collected by the indian government are consolidated or are preserved how you can withdraw money from the, this fund so uh, for withdrawing money uh, there are two procedures of withdrawing money first is uh, charges on consolidated fund of india and withdrawal from consolidated fund of india if the uh, salary, for suppose the salary of supreme court judge is chargeable on consolidated fund of india so it will automatically be deducted and if we are withdrawing some money for any project we will have to go in parliament and pass a legislation on this or pass a resolution for withdrawing money we can consider it a vote on accounts uh, if i am i'm guessing sir it's vote on accounts don't guess read okay, again sir. your hobby is the music yes sir you know anything about the dhrupad khayal so uh, dhrupad is a style of singing and khayal is a rag what is the difference between dhrupad and khayal पंडित जसराज वॉज अगर ऑफ द्रुपद स्टाइल द्रुपद सैली एंड told to you that drupad is a sally a way of singing and khayal is a rag khayal i have heard somewhere so i answered it indian constitution is a federal constitution or not so indian constitution as is not federal in its complete sense but it is a federal constitution with certain ambiance of unitary features that's fine Yes, sure. Let's analyze his his interview. You start, sir. Uh, <clears throat> I start with the first observation that comes to me: the over overview of your personality and your demeanor, and that is you are unnecessarily very very quick. That can harm your uh, mind language coordination. That can be that can be an occlusion. at some points of time please form your sentences 
with all the time available and patience. Do not rush into answering, even though your brain immediately tricks you to believe that you know the answer and you should start right now. I think if you replay the entire interview, you will find that as soon as the question ends, you, uh, uh, you jump into answering the question. It always makes sense to wait for a while and then frame your sentence properly. All the more, if you are confident, then it makes all the more sense to properly frame it in, in, a, in a good sentence so that you do not have to cut short or amend the sentence as you speak. Okay, so it always makes good sense that you should slow it, slow it down and slow it down considerably, I mean. That will help you. That will be a great help. One single most important input from my side is you should have larger context also. A judge can afford to be anything but impulsive. See it this way also, isn't it? We, we should not appear, even if we are not impulsive, but sometimes our demeanor may convey that we are impulsive. Uh, let, 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 uh, let this uh, feedback uh, finish, then you, you speak. Uh, as sure, then we'll, I will speak to you. Uh, will speak to you. Let no, you first Yes, sir. Or uh, Sir, voice was not coming. Right. Uh, let, till voice not I will uh, try to realize by the time he will come back. As far as if all goes well, you will be selected. First of my observation is that if all goes well, you will be selected. If you are not, if you are not committing any major mistake in the interview board, you will uh, you will through. So you need to be happy at least in this part. You have you have confidence in your uh, gesture, in your expression. The sure what sure will notice uh, it's very true that you are speaking a bit fast. Yesterday, if you have attended our conversation with one of the aspirants, we have told uh, that aspirant that how to control your speed of speaking. On Sunday, Bhavna is appearing from the Masuri Academy to address you. She has a similar problem which most of you has. She was speaking very fast. She will share his her opinion that how she was able to control her pace because if you are not able to control pace, all good interview going ahead at the time of interview may be jeopardized. You are doing a lot of good work, but it, basically when you speak very fast, there's two problems. One, your comprehension and sentence construction is taking some problem. Second, your communication ability is going to be compromised. That way, Saur has said, Saur has very rightly caught your point. Secondly, you have good control over the language. When the boy and girl has a good control over the language, he will certainly uh, going fast in the speaking to try to control it. Second, in IPC, you have you have you need to read it again. They say, don't guess. You said khayal is a rag. Don't, don't say this. If you are not knowing anything, you just say, yaar, hum isko nahi jante, ya, hum ko idea nahi hota hai. ये ज्यादा बेहतर है कि आप उस समय बोल दो कि आप मुझको आइडिया नहीं है सौर ने तीन सवाल किए थे अल्टरनेटिव प्ली एक्सेबल क्लेम राइट राइट टू सू हाउ यू हैव सेड आई आई डू नॉट अबाउट अल्टरनेटिव प्ली ए पर्सन हु हैज पास द लॉ डिग्री अल्टरनेटिव प्ली इज द पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ एवरी पिटीशन एवरी पिटीशन इफ यू हैव सेड इफ यू हैव फेल टू एक्सप्लेन राइट टू सू because there was a one issue with the question and answer, mere right to sue. If you go to the transfer property act, the wording used, mere right to sue. So it has, with, the, with his intelligence, he tried to remove the mere word. Then he has, tried, he has taken towards you to the question and answer. But you have given answer nicely, there is no issue at all. Secondly, about the actionable claim, I was expecting a bit, a bit better answer. Although you was able to say it, but it's Second, Nukta. Mukta was again mistake. A person who is saying my hobby is gazel singing or gazel listening, he is not aware of Mukta. It's, a, it's unfair. Because Mukta, if in the Urdu you are not knowing the Mukta, you are unable to understand the complete sentence of the gazel or in the other. In the other. Hobby you are not aware of it because music and there is a hobby music. There is a music. He has not taken you very far. 
but suppose he is he is sitting in interview board and his hobby is also music or hobby is also music then he will love to talk on this it is a general issue with everyone he wanted to talk on the issue when he is he is comfortable yeah he is knowing better the support the shower is knowing the, the the music he loves talking to music so he will ask to put three question that's why you the a music aisi hobby jo generally logon ke paas hoti hoti hai baaki acha hai aap apne apne kya kehte hain tape ko fir se suniye you speak more and more in english you stop speaking hindi i am keep repeating again again the boys and girls in which language you are going to pair in the interview interview board you keep speaking in that language again again that's all yes sir no sir uh aishwarya uh, when we uh, is the importance of uh, placing hobby is is uh, cannot be um, over emphasized isn't it so hobby is something uh, that we supply to the board it is it is we it, it is the candidate that tells the board that this is my hobby so in in fact you are giving them a syllabus to ask the questions from so that is why this area has to be much much stronger than it is for example even uh, when you come to the difference of uh, ghazal and nazm do you know uh, before that do you know why did i ask about nukta because uh, your uh, your first pronunciation of ghazal was missing it you replay it and you will find it that since you said ghazal or something like that that is why i i pointed out what is a nukta so you correct this aspect it's it's very simple it is ghazal so it has to be pronounced like one only okay number one number two also be aware of the meaning of ghazal the word ghazal what is the meaning of the word ghazal i must i am sure you must be aware if not you should know that ghazal actually emanates from an arabic word ar- arabic from the arabic culture you know that uh, the deer the musk deer musk deer you understand musk deer kasturi mrig jiske yahan kasturi hoti hai so people kill that particular deer to obtain kasturi so the last mortal cry of that deer that is called ghazal okay jab wo mar raha hota hai to aakhri jo rote hue uska jo krandan hai that is called ghazal so be prepared for this also uh, the third aspect is ghazal versus nazm you should be very categorical and clear that ghazal uh, usually it is about the subject matter number 1 and it is about the structure so that by in subject matter ghazal differs from a nazm in being capable of different subjects in its body a ghazal does not have to remain loyal to one subject that is chosen different shares of the ghazal may touch upon different aspects whereas in a nazm it has to be a single theme that is one aspect okay the second part is a ghazal usually and mostly is supposed to follow tukbandi that is called tukbandi isn't it all the shares should follow the same rhyme where nazm is open ended it's like a conversation for example chupke chupke raat din aansu bahana yaad hai this is a ghazal all all the shares will end with the same tukbandi whereas baat niklegi to fir dur talak jayegi log to aisa aisa karke it ends like that as if i am talking to you as if the entire thing is one sentence so that nazm does not necessarily have a tukbandi that is that to ask what you should know then comes uh, this aspect of uh, uh, this khayal and all my my uh, my uh, best advice sir has already guided you my advice is the same you please do not hazard a guess because that's not your hobby as simple as that okay, sir so, and if you are trying to guess first seek the permission every time okay, sir uh, uh, i i am not aware of it exactly but if uh, kindly permitted i may try a guess sir sorry zaruri hai guess kare chhod dena sir nahi karna chahiye mera wahi hai principal kahe 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 ko bina matlab kare se lega why sir aapka kaam theek chal raha hai kahe kharab karne ka why sir is saying that there is a very i mean i have also learned under sir and it is a very wise and very profound uh, reasoning why we say that you never guess even if the probability of guessing right is high don't do that why because in that time when you seek permission and then make a guess and then the board corrects you also have the prob- there is an opportunity cost if you understand it you also have the likelihood of getting a different question which you can answer more appropriately where you don't have to guess and that's why you make good use of your time before the board rather than sticking to a particular point of weakness that's why you have the tendency to move on it's okay it's okay not to know uspe koi aapka evaluation nahi hoga that is that is another point okay somewhere 
you used a phrase perhaps when we were talking about uh i think it was about the constitution yes we were talking about the constitution and separation of powers we were talking about then you said there cannot be a better example than in india you you replay it you will find it you say and there cannot be a, a better example than in india i would advise you to be more moderate uh, rather than using this extremist phrases phrases ye agar avoid karenge to acha rahega not only here always uh, never be too uh, too determined or, or too uh, what say too over uh, committed to something uh, be non committal and uh, make moderate claims only so that you cannot go wrong that is one and then uh, i saw your uh, you can very well do some homework uh, sitting in front of mirror as sir always advises sit in front of a mirror and uh, just take a vow take a pledge that your eyes will not move for half an hour and you will keep talking looking into yourself your eyes are moving here and there i saw it when you start thinking obviously because that is attributable to this medium of conversation also you cannot always keep looking in your phone but please uh, at at that point of we are preparing you for for that point of time uh, when you are in front of the panel please do not uh, make eye movements like this and that and also you replay and you will see that while recalling one particular point very strongly your lips also did some movement mm, like that so why not if you are doing so well why not make these minor corrections there is nothing major i would not say there is anything very major as well, sir has ri rightly already observed there is nothing um, uh, in the name of major defect that would you, uh, we, we would like to work upon you or something like that you are good you have done your homework you have studied well you are presenting it very well it you are coming out as a very confident ca candidate you will be a, a wonderful solicitor also if not a judge and you will be a very good and thoughtful judge if you control the speed of your conversation is control the speed of communication that is the only thing going against this expression baki sab expression sahi ja raha you are cool you are composed and uh, i have a, i have a problem which i will tell you it is my duty to be honest with you because we are sitting here and you are trusting us somewhere you are a little a kind of over confident person it, this is between brothers and i hope you will take it in the right spirit only you are slightly an over confident person which is not wrong but it is it may become wrong before elderly people sometimes they develop an antipathy unnecessary antipathy which you may have, which you may have avoided okay so why to give this impression that i am an over confident person a little and you are smart enough to remove that 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 that, that particular layer of uh, over confidence you are very smart i know you and i'm sure we will encounter you next time then you have, you would have already worked upon you so you you understand where i am getting i i don't want to elaborate on this you know it So, उस चीज को अपने को बचा लेना है उससे ये कहीं गलत इंप्रेशन नहीं जाए कि ये नॉलेजेबल है तो बहुत स्मार्ट बन रहा है दैट इज ओनली थिंग दैट कम्स बहुत स्मार्ट बन रहा है नो शांति से रहोगे एकदम काम कंपोज बहुत अच्छे से नथिंग ऑफेंसिव बट एक भी चांस हम लोग छोड़ना नहीं चाहते इतना मेहनत हो रही है एंड यू शुड डेवलप हैबिट ऑफ इन वेरिएबली कट शॉर्ट योर अनसर्टेन आंसर डू नॉट ट्राई टू फाइंड हेयर एंड देयर लाइक दैट Go, don't go fishing you get what i am saying if the answer is uncertain cut it short for the same reasoning as already told to you ki improve improve your uh, i mean improve the possibility of probability of another question rather than usko idhar udhar karke no if that is a weak spot you are not sure about it jitna aasan hai ek hi line mein bolna hai only one sentence uncertain answers one sentence only finish it this is this is all i remember sir. or this is all all i have learned that's all finish it yeah next is that that all i already uh, you this this long answers as i told you now coming to some or some uh, thing on merit i should i think you should prepare this thing this is coming again and again so you should actually prepare this part uh, that article 20 thing and collection of dna samples you prepare it better i would say okay understand it the different points of view and different uh, uh, opinions going on and i think sir would correct me uh, anush sir will also correct me i think the answer on occupied field was not uh, to the point my understanding serves me well i think it is indeed regarding that thing only it started off on a very different note uh, sir will correct me anush sir please help me here because my understanding may not be uh, sound proof on this aspect sir yes. 
I think doctrine of occupied field is regarding uh, areas of legislation which are which are in the grey, and union as well as state they may have powers, and then once a power is exercised in respect of that field by the union, then it will be considered as an occupied field of the union. Is is that correct, sir? Sir, sir. I may be missing something. Sir, yeah, yeah, ठीक है. Ashwarya, you also uh, welcome to this. Yes, so, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, right. sir. sir. So, उसको ठीक कर लीजिएगा वो दूसरे नोट पे चला गया था कि उसमें लैक्यूना वगैरह आप बोल रहे थे कि उसमें लैक्यूना को फिल करने वाला सो ओके स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड ऑन दिस एस्पेक्ट आर बेसिक देन विड्रॉल ऑफ एडवोकेट वाले पे भी एक क्वेश्चन जान बुझ के बनाया गया है दिस इज अ वेरी वेल थॉट आउट बिकॉज इफ एन एडवोकेट विदड्रॉज बिकॉज ही नोज दैट हिस यू यू वेट ऑन टू आंसरिंग अबाउट प्रोसिक्यूशन एक्चुअली कि वो क्राइम अगेंस्ट स्टेट है तो वो प्रोसिक्यूशन को ऐसे नो नो आई एम आस्किंग अबाउट द काउंसिल डिफेंस काउंसिल सो डिफेंस काउंसिल विदड्रॉस ओनली फॉर द रीजन दैट ही नोज दैट इज द पर्सन दैट हिज क्लाइंट इज एक्यूज्ड एंड ही इज गिल्टी दैट दैट्स नॉट कंसीडर्ड प्रोफेशनल नो 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 प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट इज नॉट वेरी प्रोफेशनल ओके सो दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट टू डू दैट ऑन दैट बेसिस अगर आपको एडवोकेट मान के मैं ये सवाल पूछूं तो दिस इज नॉट अ वेरी गुड थिंग टू डू फॉर एग्जांपल मैं आपको साबित कर देता हूं इसके पीछे की रीजनिंग क्या है कि नहीं नहीं सर जब मैं जानता हूं कि इसने क्राइम किया है तो फिर मैं कैसे इसका सपोर्ट कर सकता हूं मैं तो विद्रॉइ का लोन ऑन दैट्स दैट्स नॉट अबाउट द प्रोफेशन इट्स अ वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट मोरल डायलेमा आई अंडरस्टैंड बट बट यू आर नॉट सपोज्ड टू डू दैट सपोज अ पर्सन ऑफ 50 इयर्स ऑफ एज एडमिट्स टू द क्राइम दैट ही हैज डन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू एंड बिकॉज़ ही वांट्स दैट यू डू नॉट हैव द कन्विक्शन टू डिफेंड हिम suppose this is the case he gets uh, the punishment he gets the sentence gets into the punishment after 3 days of the punishment you learn that actually it was the son it was this person's son who had committed the crime and this person took the blame only to save his son understood my point yes sir you do not form opinion on the basis of conversation with your client you do what you are supposed to so th that's what i was referring to other than that i think you are very well dressed uh, your composure is all right if you have the habit of shaking legs etc try to control this as much as you can and uh, this eye movement thing i think uh, jo facial expression or eye movement ke bare mein i have told you try for 3 days if it happens naturally well if not leave it leave it usme conscious reh jaoge to your actual talent and merit that will get clouded I am very glad uh, that we interacted with you. you are good, but don't let it catch your head. Okay, keep working hard on current affairs things. Since you are mentioning constitution, at the same times you may also be cornered about corporate litigation. A little bit of corporate litigation का थोड़ा सा refresh कर लेना. Maybe somebody corners you there. कि अच्छा चल तू उसमें पढ़ा था तो फिर constitution क्यों बोल दिया फिर ये कभी ये सब बातें हो सकती हैं. You try to cover. I, I sensed it. You you try to make a ground for it. because you mentioned at the earliest point of my career i was interested in corporate litigation so that fail safe was there but still because you have been a student of that particular discipline this much of loyalty is accepted that you know the basics of corporate litigation that is my advice i'm uh, i'm very very hopeful about you uh, selection should not be a problem you should now strive for getting high rank number one number two for i don't know what is the ranking system number two do not commit any over confident blunder if you do not do number 2 number 1 is assured that's our feedback two three things i want to tell uh, ashur one you are continuously trying to clean your head probably you do not have the ac in the room and you are getting you are sweating yourself at that point of time this is one of the reason second you are trying to you are you are uh, having a nervousness after some time i do not know out of these two what is working here but i am seeing whether you are comfortable with the coat or tie or not these are the because you are continuously clearing your head because of the sweat uh, in the interview board you have the ac room therefore uh, this problem is not with there but if nervousness is coming then certainly so many times the sweating comes in the interview also so try so, to control that nervousness and when when uh, your conversation is going on is subject for the longer period of the time then your nervousness won't affect you on your face you just play this video after this we purposely record the whole uh, conversation so that the uh, aspirant can take the advantage again again in the uniform civil code you have done a blunder that the uniform civil code foundation is 
saying that in civilized society there is no relation between the religion uh, between the religion and personal law you have said otherwise i will post three four pages from the mp jain you read it it will clarify the issue of the uniform civil code i am again repeating what sort the legal issues are in the news you have complete mastery over it you have no excuse to say that i am not aware or i have not read it you just try to see it you cannot miss it the section 71 section 220 crpc which i asked about the several offenses committing to one offense single transaction rising to the several offenses i will request mr anusha to uh, slightly speak on these issues the why i why i ask these uh, topics what is a very very relevant topics right generally these topics appearing it might not come in the examination for the common public from the common parlance it is going uh, continuously in, in the society if you try to see the trend of the interview they generally ask what is more relevant for the society for the constitution the section 20 and 23 you both read i i advise to all of my aspirants you again have a control over the adaptive principles and the fundamental right because these two aspects is known by everyone everyone loves to talk on this and for a person who is going to become a judge of the uh, lower court and certainly you are going to proceed towards the high court also the constitutional matter is part and parcel of the life and fundamental right is very important so try to see that as sure said i am looking a higher rank from you you have potential of it if need arises we will repeat your interview again come up interview very good on, on 25th of august certainly certainly we will repeat your interview because we are looking a very good future in you and you might top also if all goes well you might might top my top also i am not aware of how you have done your written examination but if you work hard you can do anything and we are not looking at for the future that's from my side all the best and uh, if if the time permits us we'll repeat your interview thank you are just parting uh, words from my side there are two things i forgot to tell you at that moment one is whenever you are talking about women or muslim or any particular community okay other than yours if you are talking about any other gender if you are talking about any other community then please try to prefix it with our okay sir was one conversing with you on uniform civil code then it was like this they are opposing they are doing they are their book you you use the word our muslims are our muslims are opposing this on this ground our women that's what you do be inclusive do not uh, huh, do not refer to them like like with a stick or something that will help number one uh, number two do you have access to any serving judge uh yes sir i have a thought if you have an access uh, then you must talk to him about the real world problems in judiciary right now the, especially the the level the stratum that you are going to uh, enter at that stratum what is going on you why i am saying that uh, there is a tendency if you are uh, able to uh, portray yourself as good in theory then there is a tendency this is a natural tendency to to uh, drift from theoretical questions and try to corner you on practical aspects even though you are not supposed as a candidate you are not supposed to know all of that but some macro birds view thing you should know what what are judicial reforms which are considered necessary what is going on what is the what is the point what are the points of suffering to for the judges bar bench relationship these basic things you should be you should be clear because then that can even if one good answer from this aspect you are able to give one good answer from a very practical aspect which you are not even supposed to know that will be great that will be a very good thing icing on the cake as they say so these are the two things i wanted to add as your interview is being decided by two three questions only there is no need to answer every question correctly it is not possible for the uh, well, uh, leave aside some exception generally it is not possible for everyone to answer all questions if three four questions you answered very well they will form an opinion generally the selection in the in the uh, right now your selection is on the basis of perception you create in interview board and it will be created by only two three answers 
and if you not commit a mistake by telling a lie by bluffing them die by kissing them then you are helping to create a good perception if you answer some of questions very good and you are creating a bad perception that i am guessing i am lying i am cheating then your good perception will diluted and you will be out of the race so right now the whole effort of the all candidates to win the race not by answering good questions only or not by answering the good answers but not committing any mistakes the first aspect to be in race not to commit a mistake then the next chapter will start you are not committing a mistake you are in the race now you have won the battle so you if you proceed like this then uh, you go ahead uh, i assure that uh, we are very much looking forward for a good success from you you work hard the more and more newspaper we are posting news uh, papers every day uh, most of the parents are not reading but if you read it then uh, you will uh, have benefited thanks a lot we will uh, try to uh, repeat your interview sir so, thank you मेरे ख्याल से आज कोई और नहीं है तो फिर आज आज क्लोज करते हैं आज और कोई तो है नहीं कोई वॉलंटियर अह सो आई थिंक अनुज सर हैज टू से समथिंग या या नहीं बोलो सर मैं ये कह रहा था कि कुछ जगह पे ऐश्वर्य जो है कुछ चीजें जो है गलत बता रहे हैं तो वहां पे इन्हें सॉरी बोलना चाहिए आप सॉरी बोलने की भी आदत डाल लीजिए ठीक है हर बात पे और हर क्वेश्चंस पे जो है आप आंसर कर रहे हैं जिसके बारे में आप क्लियर नहीं है उन चीजों पर आप सॉरी बोलिए जैसे मिसकंसेप्शन ऑफ फैक्ट और मिस्टेक ऑफ फैक्ट पे क्लैरिटी नहीं थी आपके उसके बाद भी आप जो है वहां पे लेके आगे बढ़े एक जगह देखिए ऐसा है ऐसा ऐसा है आप गेस्ट वर्क बिल्कुल मत करो बिल्कुल मत करो आप गेस्ट वर्क मत करो आपके पास इतनी इंफॉर्मेशन है यू आर यू आर एबल टू आंसर यस एब्सोल्युटली आई एग्री 100% विद व्हाट सर हैज सेड नो गेस मेक इट अ नो गेस अगर आपको लगता है मुझे पांच सवाल लिया था पांच सवाल जाने दो आप मत परेशान हो आपके पास इतना इंफॉर्मेशन इतना नॉलेज का क्रेजरवायर है कि आपको दो तीन चार सवाल अच्छे मिल जाएंगे yes. उसी पे आप उसी आप प्ले करो आपका काम हो जाएगा पोर्ट्रेट दैट यू आर ट्रेनेबल डोंट पोर्ट्रेट दैट यू आर नॉलेजेबल वो अपने आप हो जाएगा पोर्ट्रेट दैट यू आर ट्रेनेबल ओके ऑल द बेस्ट और कुछ और कुछ है ठीक है सर ठीक है बस यही सर इनको थोड़ी सी कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी को रखना है जैसे मैं मैकनोटर रूल के बारे में आपसे मैं पूछ रहा था तो आपने सिर्फ एक ही चीज बताई है पांच प्रिंसिपल है रूल्स हैं ये लैंडमार्क चीज है अनु सर क्या है जो जो टॉपिक डिस्कस हो रहे हैं आप जो दिन में क्लास चलाते हो ना उस पर आप थोड़ा सा बिल्ड कर दो लोगों को इन लोगों का टाइम बच जाएगा हाँ सर करते हैं अभी सब लोग ज्वाइन नहीं हो पा रहे सर उसमें ये ये लोग आ नहीं पा रहे उसमें आपकी देखो मुद्दा ही सुस्त गवाह चुस्त वाली हालत है छह लोग ही ज्वाइन किए थे सर लास्ट में भी यही हाल था तो मैंने तो सिर्फ इसीलिए रखा था तो शायद वो इन लोगों को अभी समझ में नहीं आ रहा है या प्रूफफुल नहीं लग रहा होगा इनको तो ठीक है सर ये इनको अपने हिसाब से कैरी कर लें सर एक बात जो आप हमेशा कहा करते हैं सर वो भी इनको पार्टिंग कॉमेंट के तौर पर बताते जाते हैं ऐश्वर्य नाउ डू नॉट रन आफ्टर टू मेनी मॉक्स डोंट डू दैट दैट विल डिस्टॉर्ट योर पर्सनैलिटी डोंट डू दैट At most two more mocks. That's all. Mock interview के पीछे बहुत मत भागना. ज़्यादा देने का प्रयास मत करना. वो क्या है ना इस समय सारी coachings mock चला रही होंगी. आप लोग बिल्कुल उस चक्कर मत पड़ो. मेरी अपनी सलाह है अगर आप देना चाहो तो लेकिन वो नुकसान कर जाएगा. बिल्कुल नुकसान कर जाएगा. जो भी इस बारे में हमारे पास आता है उसका हम mock control करते हैं. अगर वो सुनता है तो ठीक है नहीं सुनता है तो भाई भविष्य आपका है जीवन आपका है इफ यूर थिंकिंग दैट योर लाइफ इज गोइंग इन द प्रॉपर डायरेक्शन बाय गोइंग टू मेनी मार्क्स यू मे यू मे गो अहेड बट आई विल एडवाइज एवरी टाइम कि गिव अ लेस मार्क टू थ्री मार्क्स इज इनफ उसे ज्यादा जरूरत नहीं है आप दस दस मार्क देते गए बार बार मार्क देते गए पता नहीं आपको क्या राय दे दिया आपके ओरिजिनल आपकी ओरिजिनल पर्सनैलिटी डिस्टॉर्ट कर दिया उन्होंने सौर ने बोला ना घर आपको दो तीन दिन में इंप्रूव नहीं करता लीव इट Because you have to intact your original personality with certain modifications. Right now, it cannot be changed, and we are not trying to change. Only we are 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 trying to change. any conflict comes into your mind after attending another mock suppose you attend another mock two mocks or three mocks 
mock interviews. And what happens as a consequence of that, on some point, the advice given by that panel is in direct confrontation with the advice that we have given. There may be a situation because diversity of opinion has to be respected. If that is the case on any particular yes. aspect, you find contradicting opinions, then you come back to us and get it clarified, then take your call, which is more convincing and reasonable. It is always advisable. You come back to us if you find any divergent opinion. You have to do it. If you have to do it, if you have to do it, if you have to do it, if you have you can discuss with us. We'll try to convince you. If you have to convince us, you can follow us. I, I always say, why it's your life. I'm trying to work hard on you. अगर आप लगता है दो ओपिनियन आ गई है यू कम एंड डिस्कस विद अस उसके बाद आपको जो चीज लगा वही वही करना बट लेट अस गिव अस अ अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एक्सप्लेन आवरसेल्फ कि उनका सही क्यों नहीं हमारा क्यों क्यों सही है और अगर ऐसा कोई दिखता है हम मिस्टेक करें वो ठीक है मैं कह देता आप ठीक करो उसको अब आवर होल एंडेवर इज टू सिक्योर योर फ्यूचर नथिंग एल्स हमारा एक ही एंडेवर है हम लोग कोशिश करते हैं क्वेश्चन बनाते हैं मॉक लेते हैं आपको ब्रीफिंग करते हैं एक ही इंटरेस्ट है दैट्स ऑल देन विल कॉल अ डे विल सी विल सी अगेन बाय थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर